it has been a long evening long speeches so i won't take much of your time and will try to make it very interesting all protocols observed i i would like to tell that because i'm very bad at saying respected so and so and so and so so all protocols observed you know life is very challenging every day throws a new challenge onto us one way or other no matter how well you prepare yourself there is a surprise on the other side but then exactly that what makes life interesting what i believe is we should have this ability to convert these challenges into excitement and that exactly what i want to talk about how to convert the life challenges into life excitements and make this life a more eventful life because there is only one life to be lived we are here only for once yeah and in a year if we have 52 sundays and we take an average life of 70 years and most of us sitting here are about 35 40 average 40 so we have 30 years that's 500 sundays into 3 1500 sundays left in our life that's how life is very small life is really small and we need to make the best of it take these challenges convert into excitement and live each day as if it's our last day make most of it and that can only happen when we look into the few things which will make our life interesting and exciting and also eventful these are the three important words which i'll continue to speak about throughout my speech the first thing i'd like to talk about in this life is is talking about dreams me as an individual call myself as a dreamer i used to dream with my eyes wide open visualize myself and what my firm believe is you achieve only how much you dream of you cannot cross more than what you have dreamt of so my theory is dream big dream as much as you can with your wide eyes open and add your soul into it when i say soul it means add your willingness to drive that dream to achieve that dream and it will be possible to achieve whatever you dream of as a child we all of course many of us have gone through the tough times we all come from almost middle class done good in our life sitting here in dubai But as a child what kept me going was these small small dreams which turned into bigger once as i grew so what i do and what i did was to grow these dreams as i grew myself in a small town where the outer world was cinema cinema was my way of seeing the world we didn't have much money to travel etc but cinema made my dreams and my dreams are made up of cinema and i would watch this cinema and would always think can i create this movies also but then the thought that it takes a lot of money and we need to be connected to make this films always made this dream dormant i kept my dream alive i decided when i grew on my professional journey that the day when i have enough money i would like to tick this box and complete my dream of making cinema so what i did was i would always upgrade my list of dreams as i grew from one phase to other and the other phase to the next but that 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 box of making cinema was always there and so in 2013 as rightly said 
when Mr. Rajat Kapoor tweeted, that I don't want to make films because nobody is ready to fund good cinema, is where I replied him back, that listen, I can make this film. And that's where we met, and that's how Anko Deki started. And that's where the whole story of cinema began. Though I was working as a CEO of Indorama Africa since, it was a big step for me. But then I did it, just for the sake of completing the dream. So dream leads to entrepreneurship. So what happened was, it's a very good story when you tell you made Akho Deki and it got three Filmfare Awards, it got three Screen, screen Awards, everybody claps. It's one of the favorite movies of some of my friends. Many people who know me know through Akho Deki. But what happened at the backdrop? I lost eight crores. That's almost like one, one million dollars back in 2013 in that film because nobody came to watch in the cinema. So when you back up these dreams, you need to have the courage of entrepreneurship. So what I did was, I said, I can't lose money and go. So I sat and drew a structure, and that's where we started Drisham Films. I said, I'm not going to go back as a loser in terms of financial losses. And that's where we set up Drisham Films, a very structured way of making films. And then we started making films, whether it is Masan, whether it is Dhanak, whether it is Newton, whether it is Kadvi Hawa, or Waiting. We won five national awards. And since then, till recently, Love Hostel was released. We never made loss in any of the films. So the point I want to drive is that yes, you have to dream, but dreams needs to be followed with full soul and entrepreneurship idea has to be put in phase so that whatever we dream of, whatever we go for, we can clearly add value to the whole idea. Today, at Drisham Films, we have partnerships with one of the most major filmmakers in India and right now we are producing more than six films that takes to the total investment almost 100 crores in the film division only. So the point I want to say is, at Drishim Films, when we started Akho Deki, I lost 8 crores, and then it was very easy for me because I had ticked my boss, box as a dreamer. I would have left the scene, but then but we continued, and we grew Drishim into a brand, and that's how we have now produced more than 14 cinema and six under production. That also lead me to complete one more dream of mine, and that was directing a film. So I wrote a film and directed it, and it's going to release this September. It's called it Sia. So the idea is that like, pursue your dream and live through this cycle of having one life, you need to live through so many other shades, so that we feel happy, we feel satisfied. So that brings on to the another topic which I want to touch. And then most of us, most of us deal, have to deal with it. And it's called, for me, it's fear of failure. Because you dream, you're also enterprising, you put in things and efforts, but then you backtrack. You backtrack because there is always this fear of failure. The fear of being ridiculed the fear of being judged, the fear of being laughed upon, the fear of being shamed. Trust me, majority of the dreams die in heart, in our own hearts, in our own bedrooms, because we feel what the world would say. How will I be judged? Will it be good? Will I be good enough? Please, make this fear your strength. Because it's your life. Nothing succeeds like success. When you are successful, people will clap. But when you don't try, the chance of success becomes 
very less, in fact, nil. So it's very important that you have to cross through this fear of failure and see a different world altogether. And that will help you to achieve so many, so many of your dreams, so many of your ideas, and you can create an impact into the society. But then, you know, the question why, why I, I used to ask myself, what is this fear? What is this fear? And how can I overcome this fear? The answer was very simple to me, and I'm telling this because these are the pointers which always become my weighing scale of taking decision. I found that I was, I was just thinking about perfection. And during these growing years, what I realized was there's nothing called perfect. Except otherwise Mother Nature, I don't see anything which is perfect. The beauty actually is in imperfection. So trying to secure 100 out of 100 was one of my biggest hurdles in creating things, in creating ideas, in disseminating ideas. I thought and I talked to myself, why do I need 100 out of 100? 80 is good, 85 is good, so that I can do multiple things. What we do is, what we try to do is, we try to create that perfect world, the perfect accounting balance sheet, the perfect organization, anything where we'll put a lot of efforts to make it perfect, we we'll lose a lot of other opportunities which we, we could have used to do so many other things. I strongly feel better be imperfect but do many things in life. It's very important. Like I'm a CEO of Indorama Africa where we, we run petrochemical plants, we run, run world's largest urea plants, one of the largest uh, rock phosphate mines and phosphoric acid. And this year, our profits have crossed more than $2 billion just from Africa. I'm CEO of that company for the last 14, 15 years. I was the one who started the company. The point I want to drive is even being a corporate CEO, you can do and follow your passion to create another brand called Drisham Films, a parallel world. That brings to me the next topic about parallel world. Here, when I came here, I saw it's written Drisham Films, producer, founder, and whatever. And I was less thinking. But 80% of the time, I focus on my job. But that's the point I want to drive is that create a parallel world. There's life beyond the organization what you live in, work in. Do we have the courage to create this parallel world to balance your dreams, your own personal dreams, and the organizational goals. That's where the interesting part of life lies. What we do is we focus on organization, on the job where we are in, and we forget our dreams, our ideas, our passion. We have one world. Try to create parallel worlds. A world which thrives with your hobbies, a world which thrives parallelly with your creativity, a world which thrives parallelly with your investments. Create these small, small worlds that will help you to even excel in your organization, that will teach you empowerment, because most of us forget to empower our team. And in that process, we end up doing most of our work. So the point I want to drive again here is create this parallel world. We forget to create this world. We think doing a job 9 to 5 or even 9 to 10, I don't know how many of you are working that way, is what is your world. Your world is more than that. Your capacity and ability is much more than that. So let's create parallel world where we even create a, a world of 
another income, secondary income. That's, that's my next point. In life, don't work for one single income source. Don't do that. You should have multiple income source and your secondary income should be more than your primary income. Do it and you'll see the change. You become so confident in your job because you don't fear that job anymore. And that will change the whole perspective about organization, about your role and responsibility and how you can grow. And this creation of parallel world and secondary income will change your whole idea of how you look life at. Because most of us spend our life as one single, single spectrum. What I'm saying is life can be lived in many ways in that same period of time. How I look at it is, for example, we get our graduate degrees by 23, 24, let's say 25, postgraduate. We start our career. By 40, we reach to a peak. And then 40 to 50 is where we have to prove our leadership skills to take your organization to the next level. And organization delivers, and by 55, 60, because of health issues and other things, you retire by 60. But you live through another 15, 20 years. The focus is that live between 25 to 40, working hard for the organization, working hard and creating your base, but from 40 to 50, create those parallel universe, parallel world, which will take you through from your 50s to 80s. Remember, after your retirement, from the age of 60 to whenever you pass through, only your hobbies, your creativities, and your skill to create this parallel world will take you forward. Otherwise, you will have a very lonely life. So that brings to my other point is create and inculcate hobbies and creativity in your life. We as a kid used to, to dance, sing, paint, write, do enacted plays, etc., etc. But as we grow up, we stop doing that. We become very serious. Some of us used to write poems, books, essays, but we stopped doing that. My point is, start nurturing back and inculcating back your hobbies. It's very important and that's what will help you live through happy life post 50s, 60s and 70s. You can become a singer, you can become an actor, you can become a writer, you can become a painter. And in this world where we live, where we are interconnected through social media, anything can be converted into an income source or the source of satisfaction. It's not all about money, but it's about satisfaction, living the life what you would like to live. So break the shackles. Go back to what you were doing as a kid. Inculcate them back, nurture them back, and see the change in your life. I'll tell you, I used to write poems, I used to paint as a child, and made this this hobby uh, as, as, and started inculcating and, and, and nurturing it back. So I finished writing two books. One was a Hindi poetry book, which I have brought because I'll, I'll read a poem out of it. One was an English poetry book. I'm just now completing my prose book. I also did three exhibitions of my paintings. So what I want to say is, it's very important to nurture those hobbies. It will help you to live a life of a painter, live a life of a writer, live a life of a, of a director, or live a life of an actor. Try it, it's very interesting. And when you go through these different worlds, when I'm in Bombay attending some of the premieres, I, I don't feel that I work in, in Africa as a CEO or taking some board meetings or taking the monthly meetings. I'm into a different world altogether, different universe altogether. Some of them even don't know what do I do in, in Africa. When I'm in Africa doing my role as a CEO, I forget what Bombay is or how we make movies or what premieres are about or 
how we cast or how we create the music or whatever it is. It's a totally different world. And it's so interesting to move seamlessly from one world to another. When you paint, you become painter. You live that world, you live those, through, through those thoughts. When you're a writer, you write and, and you create characters. And, and please uh, remember the back again, the word perfection. I know you may not win, you may not win an Oscar or you may not win a Gyan Pete Puraskar or your book cannot be a bestseller. It's fine, it's okay. The point is, even one person reads your poem or reads your story or watches your film or hears you singing, impacts him and gives him happiness, your job is done. So it's very important that we don't go for perfection, but we go for fulfillment of our hobbies, our ideas, our idea to live multiple lives in this one single life. And it's possible. There is a painter inside us, there is a writer inside us, there is an actor inside us, there is a leader inside us, there is a, there's a father inside us, there is a mother inside us, and we can play all these roles skillfully through a very, very well delicate balancing act. That brings to another point, and, and it's the last second point I would like to talk about is, is, is health. And we have gone through tough times. Everybody has spoken about it before I spoke. Over the last two years, the challenging years which we have gone through. Health is very important. For me, and my learning in life is, health is ultimate wealth. If you're not healthy, if you're incapacitated, your organization will change and bring another person next day. That's the truth. Yeah, we lost two of our colleagues in COVID. Yeah, we, we had uh, some meetings and condolence meetings, etc., through Zoom. And straight away, we started looking for people for replacement. That's the truth. That's the hard reality of the life. But you are priceless for the family. Once you're gone, you're gone forever for them. So it's very important that we focus on health while creating our parallel universe. And that's the real wealth. Without healthy mind, whether it's mental or physical health, we won't be able to, to, to get the real exploitation of whatever we created on this, our journey called life on this earth. So health is also important. And last but not least, give back to society. You know, once we die, once we go, and everybody is here for a short span of time, some maybe 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, or if you're lucky enough, 80 years, but we all go, eventually we all go. Everything, whether it's the bank balance, whether the car, what you own, the designation, what you own, the organization, what you lead, the house where you dwell, all goes back to the society. I mean, either your, either your kids take it or your relatives take it, Banks take the funds, and if you're not done a, done a proper will, you don't know what happens. You're dead, you're gone. Everything goes back to the society. Why not give it back to the society when you are alive? Do it by your hands. Because it takes village to make a man. Nobody is self made. Sometimes, out of excitement, we always say, I'm a self made man. Nobody is self made. It takes a lot of efforts, whether it's the school where you studied, whether the teachers who have taught you, the family who have stayed with you, the friends who have been with you, or those libraries which were built by many people and funded by others, the experiments, the, the traveling, whatever you have done in life, to have this position where you are in, it takes a lot of efforts to create a man who delivers or who, who stands out. So you as an individual, or sorry, rather we should say we as an individual need to give back to the society in one way or other. And that will give you the maximum satisfaction and I can bet on that. I remember during 
COVID times, when we all were fighting through it and going through this ugly uh, epidemic, and when the first wave and the second wave strike, they were both different in India, I'm talking about. The first wave was more about PP kit and the second wave was more about oxygen. And we, with the help of social media, did a social cause in terms of investing in PP kit, in distribution of PP kit, and distribution of oxygen concentrators, etc. We invest, we, we spend almost like 25, 26, 4, 5 million dollars. And that, that was one important thing which, which made me do that was, was that we have to give back the society. What if we die today? All what you have earned stays back. And that was the reason why we formed a team in social media. We never knew, we never met with each other, but we created a chain through which we met producers, we met importers of oxygen concentrators, we met a lot of other people, we supplied food, etc., etc., and it was done. And a and lot of people who have followed closely on to what we did during the COVID times would term it as a miracle what we did. Of course, it was a tough time. But the point is, we have to give back to the society from where we have come from. So I'd like to repeat before I close my, my speech or my session. Be a dreamer. Be a dreamer, dream big. Be an entrepreneur. Always look for activities, whatever I do in a day. Does it add value to you? If it doesn't add value to it, leave it. Don't do it. Say no to it. You need to push the fear of failure out. There's, there's no judgment. There's no judge here. It's your life. Once you push this fear of failure, you will get into the idea of creating a parallel world. Create those parallel worlds, parallel world of creativity, of income, of whatever, of balancing your life, your family life, everything. Create it. Don't create just, don't be in one bubble. Don't worry about perfection. Nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect, and there is always a beauty in imperfection. Yes, of course, take care of your health. That's very important and primary. And give back to the society. Because from dust we have come, and in dust we all will go. Thank you very much. I take this opportunity to present uh, Manish as a writer and I would like to read one of my poems I've written in Hindi. I don't know how many of you understand Hindi. Uh, <clears throat> Just to prove a point that you have parallel world. <laughs> the poem goes with Kavita ka jo shishak hai wo hai Tum Chalna Zaroor. Jeevan ka nichod abhi tak ka mera bas itna sa hai. जीने का पर्याय बस चलते रहना है मंजिलें मिले तो ठीक ना मिले तो भी ठीक हमें रुकना नहीं है यात्रा का अनुभव जरूरी है मंजिल कतई नहीं हदबंदियों की तो हदबंदियों को तोड़ बेखौफ चलना दुनिया की उठती उंगलियों से बेपरवाह हो चलना मौसमों से बदलते लोगों से बेफिक्र हो चलना कई सुनी बातों को दरकिनार कर चलना क्योंकि तुम चलोगे तो कई और चलेंगे तुम उठोगे तो कई और उठेंगे तुम बदलोगे तो कई और बदलेंगे तुम्हें देख तुम्हारी परिस्थितियां भी बदलेंगी कई अनुभव मिलेंगे उन नए अनुभव को अपने साथ जोड़ते चलना कुछ उसूल नए बनेंगे उन्हें भी अपने अंदर कहीं जगह दे के चलना खुद पे यकीन रखना हिम्मत रखना अपनी खुशियों से अपने गमों से अपने सपनों को सजा के चलना अपने दिल के हौसलों की लौ को जला के चलना क्योंकि तुम चलोगे तो कई और चलेंगे तुम उठोगे तो कई और उठेंगे तुम बदलोगे तो कई और बदलेंगे तुम्हें देख तुम्हारी परिस्थितियां भी बदलेंगे थैंक यू